Now, again, don't misunderstand me. None of these, these, I'm not saying these members of the welfare establishment opposed it out of, uh, out of a deliberate malice or with the belief that they were doing harm. Not at all. But everybody is perfectly capable of persuading himself that what's in his interest is in the nation's interest. And the, the bureaucrats, here I am, I'm running a bureau. We're doing good work. We're doing important things. You mean to say you're going to put me out of business? That's not the way to improve the national welfare. And so you get a, a, a concentrated group of governmental bureaucrats who make it more and more difficult to follow policies which are in the general interest if they tend to conflict with their own bureaucratic interest. Let me go from this general level of analysis and get down to specific cases. Let me first give you some numbers to show you that I'm not making up the problem I'm talking about. We have had an enormous number of welfare measures passed over the past 50 years in the name of helping the poor. The total expenditures on all these programs, the total expenditures by the federal, the state, and the local governments, excluding private expenditures, excluding private charity and the rest. Total governmental expenditures amount today to one-seventh of the national income. The government, to put this in terms that are more meaningful, the government publishes figures on the number of people who are regarded as being in poverty. Now, I warn you, that's a wholly arbitrary number. These levels that divide people between the not poor and the poor are arbitrary, but take them for what they are. The government estimates something like uh, 12 or percent of the people are in what they call low-income status or poverty. Suppose I divide the total amount of money spent on these programs by the number of people labeled poor. The answer comes out to $9,000 per person or $36,000 per family of four, to take the mythical family of four so much beloved by statisticians. Compare this with the average per capita income of everybody. The per capita income, per person income, of all the people in the United States, after taking away taxes, disposable income, is $6,500. If that $9,000 per person were really going to the poor, they'd be among the rich. <laughs> that income given to them would put them in the top 20% of the income distribution. But of course, it isn't going to the poor. It's going to you and me. It's going to the governmental officials. It's going to the various programs that are enacted in the name of helping the poor, but end up helping you and me.